Today I want to take a look at Azure Automation Accounts and Monitoring Runbooks for Failure. So if we come in here and we search for our automation account, we'll go ahead and create a new one. We'll give it a resource group and a name. So we have our resource group and we can give the name East US 2 Review Create. This is going to create a brand new automation account with the default template runbooks from Microsoft. From there, we can add our own runbook. And after that, we'll add alerting for failures. All right, from this, we'll go to resource, locate runbooks. And we have the two templates that Microsoft gives us. We're going to create one of our own. So here, we're going to create a new runbook. Demo runbook. The type is PowerShell version 5.1 create. We'll take it just a moment to provision. And here we can set up an action that we know will raise an error, 1 divided by 0. We'll go ahead and publish the runbook. So here, taking a look into the runbook, we'll go ahead and refresh. Start the job. Yes. And that'll give our first execution, or we can view the log, and it is queued up for running in the background. Excellent. It shows a running status. And now it shows a complete status. So what's interesting about this is that the actions themselves have an error. There was an exception raised as an attempt divide by zero. So we have an exception in the code running divide by zero, but on the status overall, we're seeing but the status overall, we see complete. Now, the one thing we want to change in our code is an error action preference to stop. We need the error action preference stop as a way of raising the error up one level to the runbook status overall. So let's go in here, and we're going to set one more line of code, error action preference stop. With that one change, we're now going to raise the error up so that the runbook itself will not report completed, but rather failed. So it's publishing right now. Right, so here we'll go ahead and start the runbook to execute. And we go to all logs. Yes, and now the status is reporting failed for the runbook execution overall. So instead of seeing that the job completed with the failure somewhat hidden inside of the logs, we're now raising the failure up a level to the status for the runbook execution overall. By seeing the failed report here, we can hook into it using tools in the automation account. So coming up a level to automation account, we want to go over to monitoring alerts. We'll come into the alerts section and we'll create a new alert rule. So when we come into the automation account overall, we want to go over to monitoring alerts. And from here, we're going to create a new alert rule. The alert rule will need a signal. We're going to look at total jobs for our signal. And we want the total count greater than zero, where the status is equal to failed. And having some history on the right, we can actually see one failed in the recent history, which is allows us to populate that on the drop-down value of the different statuses. So here we have failed status, checking every one minute. And we want to do our when to evaluate interval of checking every one minute, looking back five minutes. So we'll bring this forward. And then on the details, we need to give it a severity. We'll raise the severity to error. And we need an alert rule name. So here we're going to give an alert rule name, alert rule. That will work. And then we can move forward. We need to set an action. So what action do we want to take when the threshold is met? We're going to create an action group and fill out the template. OK, so here we're going to give it a display name and an action group name. And we'll look at next for notification. So within an action group, we want the notification to be which channel. Here we can do emailing a role. And for that, we're going to pick out the owner role. 
Yes. Hit OK. And this can be email owner. So this is going to send an email notification to the owner of that particular Azure resource. We'll go to create and finish our action group with create. And now I can finish our alert rule with create. So the alert rule needs an action group within it. There's a parent alert rule and a child action group. With both of those in place, we go ahead and save. And this is going to set our ability to get an email alert if there's any issues with the runbook. And we're using Azure to monitor Azure. So that's how we can take our runbooks, design them with the correct preference, so that during any failure, we're going to raise that status up, error action preference stop. That will make a failed status up one level. And then that will activate the automation account who has the alert rule for monitoring. And so then up at the automation account level, when any of the runbooks raise a failure, that's going to be visible in the recent jobs history. And for monitoring, that's going to come through in the monitoring alert section where we have our alert ready to go that for the alert rules, we have one saved. Severity of error, if the total is more than zero, we're going to email the owners. Coming into that, you can also edit if you need to modify the threshold, modify the action that's taken, or modify the notification, even running a test of the action group. And here from the edit action group screen, we even have a button for test action group with a test button that allows us to send the email notification type. And this would be activity log test. There we go. Running. Test may take a few minutes. So the, the action groups allow us to route the message the right way. If it's going to be email, SMS, there's a few different options. And sort of manage that independent of the threshold condition. So the alert rule has the threshold, but it also has the action group as to how to notify people. There's a lot more to explore inside the monitoring. But this is our way that we can monitor runbooks and maintain any alert for a failed runbook by using Azure to monitor Azure. Thanks for watching.